Hello guys, welcome to this first video on upper meridian passages for the sun. In this question in particular, we'll be finding the GMT and also the zone time for the sun at upper meridian passage on the 11th of May of 1979. This will be whilst the ship is stationary, so we won't be working any vectors in this case. So all the information given in the question, I've highlighted in this column on the left here. So the date of the vessel is 11th of May. The DR latitude is 41 degrees, 22.0 minutes north. The longitude is 27 degrees, 48.0 minutes west. And then the body we're dealing with is the sun at Upper Meridian Passage. So just like always, the first thing we need to do is actually to find an approximate time. Because this approximate time is not only going to tell us when we can expect the, the body to be um, at up and in passage at the vessel, but it will also give us an approximate time in GMT, and that is the time that we will need to actually enter um, the nautical almanac on. So the very first thing that we need to do is actually to add um, the date in there for the vessel. So in this case, it's going to be on the 11th of May, and now we need to go into the nautical almanac. So we're going to go into the nautical almanac on May the 11th, and we need to go and look in the left hand page, bottom right corner, what is the upper meridian passage for the sun. So what is the time given there? So there's three dates and on the 11th of May there's a date next to it and should be around about noon. So we know that anyway where you are in the world, you would expect the sun to be above you or on your meridian at more or less about noon. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that time there and then we can see the time in the, in the almanac on that date is actually 11.56. Now we know that that 11.56, remember, is a time at the actual meridian. So it is the time on the, for the observer's latitude at your specific meridian. It is not the time at the ship. Okay, so... What we need to do is we actually need to apply a longitude here. Now, in this case, our longitude is west. And if our longitude is west, we're going from the local meridian towards the Greenwich meridian. And therefore, this longitude must then be added. Okay. So, this, this value that we're going to be adding here will be a time increment or a time change that basically correlates with our longitude. So from our meridian towards the Greenwich meridian is 27 degrees and 48 minutes. And we know, based on our 24-hour calendar day and 360 degrees, which is the Earth's total longitude, so that basically gives us a 15 degree shift per hour. So if we're going to shift our longitude, so we're using a D-long year of 27 degrees 48 minutes at 15 degrees an hour, so it's basically distance over speed equals time. So that's going to give us then a time change of 1 hour and 51 minutes. This, of course, will be added because it's west. So still on the same date then, the 11th of May, at 13.47, we will have upper meridian passage approximate at GMT. Okay. Now, what we also need to find is actually the ship's time and the ship at the moment is in zone Oscar so that means it's in the Western Hemisphere as we can see from the longitude there and also that the time that needs to be added here um, to go from West to Greenwich will be two hours but in this case we're going from Greenwich back to the ship swinging so back in the westerly direction and therefore we will be subtracting two hours so that's going to keep us on the same date then so at a time of 11.47. So this will give us an indication this is sometime in the morning at the ship and it's sometime in the afternoon at GMT. So what we need to do with that information if we're going to go into the almanac it will be used to be approximately more or less the same information that we had there for GMT. So let's just check that. So we're going to have the LHA for upper meridian passage so the local hour angle for upper meridian passage which we know must be either zero or 360 degrees because the sun is on the observer's meridian so there's no increment in time no polar angle and in this case we're going to be going from local towards greenish which means we're going to add 
So what we're going to put in there is actually a value of 0 degrees on the same meridian. So that longitude as it is there comes down. We'll be adding the longitude and we add 27 degrees 48 and then that will give us an actual GHA, so Greenwich hour angle at up for upper meridian passage of the sun, which is 27 degrees and 48 minutes. So with this now in mind, this GHA over here is a combination of a tabulated GHA and an hour angle increment. So we need to now find out the tabulated GHA in the almanac that is actually closest to and also before 27 degrees and 48 minutes. So we can go into our almanac and we find that GHA. So a GHA that lies in the vicinity of 27 degrees 48 minutes on the 11th of May. It's very important that this date over here that I'll put in the yellow box. So that date over there, that Greenwich time, that date, that is what we're going to be using when we are going into the almanac. So if you go into the almanac on the 11th of May, you'll then find that your GHA, your tabulated GHA, is 015 54.9. So 15 degrees 54.9 minutes. And this is at what time? Is it it is at the 11th of May at 1300 in the almanac. So that 1300, you can also see the 13 there and the 13 there will be correlating. So that just gives you an indication that what we are doing so far is correct because we said it would be approximately 1347 and here we already have the 13 coming. Now, that increment we were talking about, so this was a, a combination of a tabulated GHA and an increment. So therefore the increment itself then must be the GHA minus the tabulated GHA. So we can simply subtract 15 degrees 54.9 from the 27.48 and that will then give us an actual increment of 11 degrees 53.1 minutes. So there's no additional corrections we need to apply here. That's it. It's just GHA, the increment, and then that will give us um, an LHA once we applied longitude. So we've just done the site reduction and basically gone and done that in reverse. So the next thing we need to do is we need to check, okay, this was now at 2300, this was at 2300 on the 11th, right? That tab GHA there. So that increment was from 2300 up until um, the time that we are actually using, which is going to be this GHA there. So now what we want to do is that this Total change. So we want to look now at the total change between 2300 and midnight. Okay, so from 2300 to midnight, which will coincidentally be on the next day, but that's not really relevant at the moment. So we're going to go from 2300 up until the next hour. Okay, so up until midnight then of the 12th. So the total change there is 15 degrees on the dot. Now we know that the movement, the relative movement of the sun is approximately 15 degrees an hour. Okay, so it won't always be exactly 15. Sometimes you'll have like 14, 59.8 or whatever the case may be. And in this case, it's 15 on the dot. So what we're actually dealing with from 2300 to midnight, we've got a total change of 11 degrees, 53.1 minutes out of a maximum change of 15. So that's going to give us a fraction. Okay, that's going to give us a fraction there, and that fraction, the decimal value that we have there, we can simply convert into a time difference, and that's going to give us a change in time of 0 hours, 47 minutes, and 32 seconds. That, of course, will have to be added to our tabulated GMT, and that's then going to give us an actual GMT at Upper Meridian Passage, which is still on the same date, and... You shouldn't have any trouble adding that up. That gives you 1347.32. This, of course, will be in Zulu time. So we will now put the time zone in there because this time wasn't an accurate time. It was plus minus. And this over here is in a complete time, so we didn't have to name it. But that now is an official time. We're stating that at G GMT at Upper Meridian Passage, 1347.32. We can call that time zone Zulu. Now, the ship, which we know is two hours behind Greenwich, 
um, in time zone O. So the zone difference for Oscar then will be minus 2. And in this case, we're going to subtract again because we're going from Greenwich back in a westerly direction to the vessel. And the vessel is keeping Oscar time. So that minus 2 hours. And that will then give us a final time of Upper Meridian Passage at the ship on the 11th of May at 11.47.32. And then the time zone there, of course, will be Oscar. And that's essentially the answer to the question. So the question asked us to get an approximate time. So we got that over there. There's an approximate time for Upper Meridian Passage in Greenwich time. Then there's an approximate time for Upper Meridian Passage at the vessel. And then we basically work back from our LHA, which we know is always zero, to get a GMT, an actual GMT, to the nearest second for Upper Meridian Passage at the sun. And then also a time at the vessel, which is in Oscar time, um, two hours behind Greenwich, and that will be a ship time, Upper Meridian Passage for the sun. So in the next video, I'll do another one of these. Um, this will be part one of this specific type of work. And then we will also move on to lower meridian passages.